have to listen to me and not to see too much on the uh, on the slide. I'm really sorry. But uh, as I said, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, today I want to talk about the marginal population of white cedar. But uh, uh, of course, white cedar is an extreme example of uh, many marginal population that seem to be better controlled by uh, fire than directly by climate. So that's the main message of the of the presentation so uh, we are all interested to future species distribution but most of the biogeographical model are based on climate envelope but uh, the, the northern limit of, uh, of species are often and uh, controlled by other factor at the regional scale so uh, of course climate is the uh, ultimate variable that controls the northern limit of species but if we look at the one or two uh, degree of latitude yes pardon c'était mon micro okay sorry uh, then it it might be controlled by other factor and uh, this is quite important if we want to forecast the northern limit of uh, of species so uh, I will stress the distribution of species between the temperate and the boreal uh, limit in, in Western Quebec. And uh, here it's uh, represented by a uh, mixed wood, but uh, mixed wood that are dominated by conifer and uh, hardwood, such as uh, maple in the south, but uh, softwood or conifer mixed with uh, uh, aspen and birch in the north. So we go from a uh, Temperate mixed wood to a boreal uh, mixed wood. Uh, the species I, I will talk about is, is mainly the, uh, I guess I can take that out. It's uh, white cedar. White cedar, which is uh, uh, the characteristic, it's a very, very late successional climax species and with a high longevity over a, a thousand years. It's very shade tolerant. It's a uh, low dispersus, dispersal, but uh, locally maintained uh, via layering. Uh, very sensitive to fire, but resistant to insect and wood decay. And uh, one, one, one particularity is that it to tolerates the excess of uh, calcium or uh, magnesium. Ah. Okay. So if we look at the, uh, at the actual uh, uh, white cedar, you can see that uh, here at the, uh, the survey of the Ministry of Forest in, in Quebec, and you can see that uh, among the plot that they survey, uh, it's a very uh, continuous distribution in the south. It's a discontinuous uh, uh, distribution, and you have a, a, a very marginal distribution in the north. You can see uh, two dots in the close to Shibugamo in the in the north in the uh, black spruce forest. So really in the in the boreal zone. So what factor limit the northern expansion? It could be low reproductive success. It could be lower growth, so less uh, less uh, ability to compete the other. Lack of a suitable habitat or natural disturbance. So I'll just go through some of the, uh, the, the results for a white cedar. Uh, first thing we look at is that the seed and seedling production are lower at the marginal zone. Uh, here I have a, a table. I'll just uh, 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 summarize the result. It's that clear that uh, there's enough seed in the north. Uh, the, the, the seed are viable. The, uh, the um, the only thing we can see between the continuous and the marginal is that the mortality of the seedling is higher in the marginal population than it is in the uh, uh, in the southern population. But on the other hand, when we look at the sapling, uh, there is no big difference between uh, uh, saplings in the south and the north, which means that maybe the fact that it can layers compensate for a lower production of the of seedlings. takes time to change from one slide to the other.
Okay, so if we look at the age structure, we have a constant recruitment uh, of, uh, of seedlings. Uh, um, in, in the, this is from the, uh, the, the Foss Morton site of the distribution of the species. So no problem with the reproduction, even at the Norton limit, they reproduce quite well. So what about the radial growth now? Uh, if we look at the, uh, at the uh, uh, transition of the site that were sampled for uh, radial growth, we go, we go in the south from uh, an average temperature of uh, 3.1 to uh, a 0.5 degree C. So a, a large gradient from the southern part to the northern part. But if you look here in, the, in this graph of the uh, uh, basal area in Trinum for the last 20 years, we can see that the difference is not significant because the grow in the south and the north. Um, if we, uh, we look at the uh, change in time, looking at the grow trends, uh, we should expect uh, that uh, uh, between 1953 and 2010, there would we would have an increase in temperature. So it should appear in the growth ring of the trees if the temperature is the limiting factor. And uh, what we see in the growth of the, the, the species during that period is a decrease rather than an increase. So it seems that temperature is not the main factor controlling the growth. And in fact, to make the story very short, if we look at the correlation with the uh, uh, growth rings and, and uh, the temperature and the precipitation, we realize that uh, it's really a drought signal. Uh, in fact, uh, high temperature during summer is, is not good for the growth of the trees because it's, uh, it creates condition to dry. So uh, it, it's not really temperature that controls the growth of the uh, white cedar. So again, it's not the growth that is the, the main uh, factor. So could it be the, the, the fact that there is less and less uh, suitable habitat as we move to the north? Of course, in this part of the, of the uh, Quebec, we go from an area where, which is still dominated to area where we have more clay and then peat that develop as we move towards uh, uh, James Bay. So uh, maybe, and, and it goes with uh, decrease in, uh, in the altitude, so perhaps we could have a, a, a lack of suitable habitat. So uh, uh, one of the co-author make a very complicated but very good analysis of trying to uh, make a, a model of the distribution of white cedar in the south and look if it's the, the, uh, the, the, the site in the north, uh, there would be e equivalent site in terms of uh, a drainage, a surficial de deposit aspect and, uh, and everything. And so we were able to have a, a good model of uh, predicting where uh, white cedar should grow in the, in the north according to the characteristic of uh, the, uh, the, the environmental characteristic where it is present in the south. And you can see here that there is quite a lot of site where he should be there, which is the empty uh, circle, uh, the, the, the full circle are the area where white cedar is in fact observed. So there's a lot of uh, suitable habitat in the north that are not colonized by the species. So uh, no consistent south to north trend. The availability of site at, and, and their properties within dominant important, but not crucial. Effect on regeneration, a little bit, not on growth, uh, no direct control of tem temperature. So uh, what, 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 what is the, the factor that we, we, we could involve? So uh, I come back to fire. As we move uh, towards the marginal distribution of the white cedar, uh, there is a more and more fire and the fire tend to be larger. So, uh, uh, it's, it's sure that a uh, species that is a late successional species that doesn't have a, a good dispersal, very sensitive to fire, so you need a survivor to reinvade after the fire. Then you, you, you would have a, a, a distribution that is strictly constrained by the presence of a, a fire. 
So here we have result of the age of the stem uh, where white cedar is present compared to the age of the stem surrounding the white cedar stem. And in, in, in all case, uh, white cedar is uh, the white cedar stem are older than the uh, the stem that are surrounding, which means that they are generally uh, skipped from the large fire. And those skip are located in humid habitat or close to lake shore or a very uh, uh, protected uh, area from fire. I just put here, here an example of uh, Lake du Parquet where we find uh, a fringe of uh, white cedar around the lake, but the white, white cedar is, uh, is uh, not abundant inland in the, in the forest, so it's, uh, it seems to be protected by the fire uh, just at the margin of the lake. And it grows at the margin of the lake because it can stand the effect of uh, ice uh, during the, the springtime, which, which the other species cannot uh, support. So increase in, uh, in uh, fire cycle or decrease, increase in fire frequency, decrease in fire cycle as we move from south to north of the distribution. Fire tend to be bigger as we, as we move to, uh, toward the north. Uh, interestingly, the peak of distribution of Tuya during the Holocene was uh, 6,000 years ago. Uh, if we look to uh, pollen reconstruction during a period where the fire frequency was very low and uh, the distribution of white cedar decreased afterwards when the uh, fire frequency increased during the Holocene. So a conclusion, the direct effect of climate are irrelevant in, in that case. Uh, the climate envelope approach may be misleading in some way to explain the distribution. Indirect climate of, of effect through change and disturbance regime. Uh, and it, this might be relevant for many other species. I just put the map here of many species that where we have data that uh, have their limit at the, uh, uh, the boundary between the boreal and the temperate zone. And uh, uh, I, I won't go to all these these, uh, these uh, study, but just to, to tell you that uh, for uh, sugar maple, uh, for red maple, for uh, yellow birch, for uh, uh, red pine, uh, white pine, uh, what uh, what we have is uh, is is really uh, uh, good regeneration in the marginal population generally good growth but in most cases the problem is that they are the population are restricted uh, by the uh, presence of fire so thanks to student and collaborator and sorry for the powerpoint that was not very clear thank you very much eve we already have two questions for you from adon ali what is the potential dynamic of white cedar in the context of climate change and in regard to these suitable potential sites in the north? Uh, in fact, we have a study to, that uh, where we, we look at the regeneration at the margin of a northern stem and uh, the, uh, the uh, increase in the size of the population through time is very, very low. So it would take a lot of time uh, for uh, white cedar to be able to uh, reinvade from the marginal population because of the uh, uh, very, very low uh, capacity of uh, 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 sending the, 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 the seed to, uh, to a, a good distance. And, and uh, white cedar is a late successional species, so it won't be uh, very successful under uh, the canopy of a, hard, uh, of a hardwood species. So it has to wait until he has a good safe site. So I, I, I guess it, it's something that would take a long period of time. And then the last question, why is the species important for the boreal spores? Thank you. I think I use it as, a, as an example. I think. Uh, if you look at the white cedar, it's, it's not 
uh, a species that is, uh, has a great value for forestry. It's, uh, it's useful, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good way, wood for a, a certain uh, use, but not for the, the big, uh, big industry. So uh, I guess what is something that is perhaps quite important is uh, for the native people. You, you know that uh, this uh, species, if you know the uh, history of, uh, of uh, Quebec, it saved the French that came here that had the, I don't know in English, the scobu, where there has a lack of uh, one of the, the vitamin C, I think. And it's the, uh, the native that uh, told the French that they should uh, chew the, the white cedar because uh, that would be a good cure against that. Uh, scurvy, well, it's a yes. very important species for the native. Yeah, I think scurvy, right? Because of vitamin C, they didn't have enough yeah. vitamin C potentially. Um, we have actually two more questions. Sorry, if that's okay. Um, Igor asked, "Do paleo records support this interpretation?" And then C.V. Gauthier asked, "Do you know about the conditions that cause the higher mortality of seedlings in the north?" And could it be a selection factor for local adaptation of the species to these conditions? And those should be the last two questions. Sorry, everyone. Okay, for the, the paleoecology, there's a good stu study by a, a student of, uh, um, of uh, Hugo, and, and uh, I guess it's, it's at that, showing that in some place, uh, white cedar was present in the past. They look at the uh, um, charcoal and pollen and uh, charcoal in the soil and, and they, they were area where the distribution was larger in the past than it is uh, currently. So of course this uh, decrease in the distribution of a, of a white cedar could be show both at the regional level and also at the, at the local level. And for CV the question is quite interesting. I think that uh, with the neoglacial, uh, the, the main factor uh, uh, to, to that in it, probably white cedar in the, in, uh, in the north is the, the paludification and the presence of a sanium in the forest uh, that are not uh, very music. So uh, as soon as you have all these habitats of uh, peat, even if you have a good safe site somewhere else, the distance between the mesic site and the uh, and the, the the marginal population is often too long, and white cedar is not perform performing well in uh, in uh, thick organic matter. Uh, I mean, uh, in thick organic matter that is well decomposed, yes, white cedar can can perform well, but when you are in peat with a low decomposition, it seemed to be unable to germinate and, uh, and uh, uh, grow very well. Merci bien, Yves. 